presence in our midst today, O oh God. And we acknowledge, O oh God, your awesome presence in our midst today. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like eagles, and they shall, like an eagle's, they shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you, O oh God, Lord, that you are our strength and our portion forever. Thank you, O oh God, Lord, that we will not be afraid because our Lord is the light and our salvation and we will not be afraid because you are a faithful God. Lord, this morning, oh God, Lord, we just want to thank you for once again you bringing us together in this place to honor you, worshiping together in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is the very reason why we came to this place, oh God, to lift your name on high, oh God. For we will celebrate because of your goodness, because of your faithfulness, oh God. And thank you, Lord, that you inhabit the praises of your people. And once again, Lord, you are going to reveal yourself to us, oh God. Your kindness, your loving kindness, oh God. Your love that never ceases. Your mercy that never comes to an end, oh God. Thank you, hallelujah, for your presence in our midst today. For we acknowledge that you are in the house, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the Lord God Almighty. You are our Jehovah Jireh, our great provider. You are our Jehovah Rapha. You are our great healer. Oh, you are our Jehovah Shammah. You are always with us, Lord. Oh, blessed be your name. Glory, glory to God. To the King Eternal, to the King Immortal, to the Invisible and the Only Wise God. Oh, we worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. Father, this morning, oh God, once again, I lay down everything to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Even the preaching of your words, oh God. Thank you for your servant that you are going to use for today. And I pray that you will continue to anoint him, Father God, Lord. And you will hide him under the shadow of your wings, oh God. And Father, I pray that you will continue to bless my brethren that are here today. That you will allow them, Father God, Lord, hallelujah, to open up their spiritual ears, spiritual um, heart, oh God, Lord, to receive the bread of life today that will transform and change our inmost being, oh God. Father, once again, we give you the highest praise, the highest adoration. Hallelujah, come on, shout your praise to God. Give your honor and glory to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your name forever and ever, oh God. Once again, receive all the praises, all the honor and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, this we pray. And everyone say and agree. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. It's been a while. Uh, uh, I don't uh, perform a special number, so uh, my two feet have been shaking right now. But praise God, is to be the one to be glorified today. Amen. Um, the songs I'm going to sing today is related to the Bible. In the First John chapter four verse seven says that, brethren, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves is has been born of God and knows God. Amen. Your love, 
your love is all I have to give. Your love is enough. The light of the darkness is your love. Your love, all I ever needed is your love. Hallelujah. You know therefore I have given. You know exactly what it cost Though my innocence was taken Not everything is lost Not everything is lost But you love your love Only thing that matters is your love Your love is all I had to give Your love is enough to light up the darkness is your love, your love. All I ever needed is your love. You're the hope in the morning. You're the light when the night is falling. You're the sound my heart singing. It's your love. You're the eyes of the blind man. You're the feet in the land I'm walking. You're the song the people singing. It's your love, your love. Woo! Your love. With your love, your love. The only thing that matters me is your love, your love. It's all I had to give. Your love is enough. The light of the darkness is your love. Your love. All I ever needed is 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 your love. It's all I ever needed. Jesus is your love. Thank you. Because this morning we're going to talk about, I hope it works. Okay, it works, right? So. We continue in this series, Who is Jesus? How about you? You know who is Jesus? Praise God. So, with our topic this morning, it says, you know, Jesus, the coming king. Now, we know, we know all these things in this month about who Jesus is. But this, this thing in here is, he is the coming king. So, that maybe, you know, you are one of these things here. Maybe you are one of those asking this question, will Jesus come again? Have you ever asked that in yourself? You know? And who are those kind of congregation asking in that, will Jesus come again? And the other one, the, the next thing is, when, G, when he is coming, and people say, well, he don't come yet, continue doing what you're doing, right? So the other person what a difference does it make? Meaning that he don't care if Jesus comes. If Jesus, you know, I don't know how many years. But let me tell you something that we need to understand the kingdom before we understand correctly the event surrounding the second coming of Jesus. That we must learn a little bit about the kingdom of God. The Bible is teaching us about the kingdom of God. Right? So Matthew 13, 24, the kingdom of, God, of, of heaven is like a man. So the good seed. It's talking about the word of God in our heart. And the second one in verse 31, the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. I'm talking about your faith. It doesn't it take big faith, but it's only a mustard seed that we need, you know, to, to have faith in God. We don't tell me, say, well, I have my faith as big as my car. Well, I have my faith as big as anything that you can see as big it is, right? But clearly, <clears throat> the Bible says, that the return of Christ is certain. So the Bible says in John 14, 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come, come back and take you with me, 
that you also may be where I am. All right, in, the Bible, by, uh, in John 14, 2, the verse before that, it says, In my Father's house, there are many mansions. In other translation, in my Father's house, there are many rooms. Now, which one you, you, you want to prepare? A rooms or a bed spacer or a mansion? Mansion. But look at the sentence in here. In my Father's house, there's a lot of mansion. Maybe a man, that kind of house is really, really big right but you know politically correct is in my house there's a lot of room but i don't, I don't confuse you but we are my question is which one you prepare the mansion or the room but it's up to you i'll leave it to you as long as you you are with with jesus right in the last days because regardless of regardless of mansion or rooms, as long that there's something pre pre prepared for you, whether it's a mansion, whether it's a room, it depends on the translation of the Bible, right? But the most important thing that we know, that we know, the very basic thing is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, just like the person who's sowing the seeds, the good seeds. The person of the, the kingdom of God, just like the person. They're sowing the small seed. It's like a mustard seed. And that's what it takes for us to believe Jesus. Because we don't even know when Jesus has come. We hear his name many times. As long as in your birth, as long as you remember. And if you are 40 years old, maybe 40 years ago you heard that one. If you are 50 years old, and I know what, what, year you are, what age you are, then you heard about Jesus Christ. But you don't know that Jesus is coming back again. Right? That's the only one thing that we need to know. The second coming of Jesus is sure. Really, really sure, 100%. We know his coming. But let me tell you something here. There is a three person that, that you, you know, we look at. Whether, am I that person? You know, am, am I that person? So now this is in here that we know that he's coming, but we don't know when. While many of us are filled with expectation, that's a person number one. Several of us are distracted by other things, the person number two. Right? Some of us have just fallen asleep. Let me tell you something in here. That you know what? The very few filled with expectation. Very few, maybe, you know. I'm not telling you that I know in your hearts. I'm not telling you that how long you've been Christian. I'm not telling you anything about those things. But what we see now is, you know, some of these people, you know, with the expectation, we're filled with expectation. The sick one is several are distracted by other things that we know that we have been distracted in, many, in the small things or the big things. When we consider the big things, the very, very big things, that is a problem to us, right? So now the, the small things, maybe you don't know that every day you, you face that, you know, that kind of uh, the things that in your life that you are being distracted. You're being distracted the way how the driver drive in front of you. You're being distracted with many, many things. You're being distracted in the good things, maybe your computer, that every time, I'm, I'm not very particular of these things, right? So now being distracted, why? Because we need to focus to the author and the finishers of our feet, which is Jesus Christ, right? So what happened to us, now that it happened, why I'm telling you? Because it happens to me many, many times also. That instead of going back to my, I have my Bible in front of me, and I have other things in front of me, and I have another things in front of me. That's a distraction to me because well, after I go down, there's a bureau a few minutes, you know, a few minutes for my, my reading of my Bible and studying of my Bible. That's the, the things that we have a lot of distraction. In many, in many of us, distracted in many things, but we don't consider it as a distraction because it's good for us. It is looking good to us. But distracted by the word of God, that we suppose to have all this thing, you know. And this is the third one: just falling asleep, falling asleep. Have you ever remember, you know? Have you ever remember that one day when you, when you, it's very really literal things, you know, that when you read your Bible, study the word of God, and you're falling asleep. I'm not that talking about. The falling asleep here, you know, sees paying attention spiritually. 
you, you, you cease to paying attention to the Word of God. After you get distracted and you fall asleep, meaning spiritually things that you said, wow, you know, I heard, I heard this one, I read this, this thing many, many times, and you cease to pay attention. Paying attention is very important, just like what James is talking about, you know, that we need to hear the Word of God. You need to pay attention. You know, one day when I was, when I was in that hour, safety training, you know, I don't, I'm not really expecting that they're going to ask me that I wasn't paying attention to the guy who gave me the, the safety training. And he called my name and said, what? What you saying? And everybody laughed at me because I was in the front. You know, I was just daydreaming, you know, uh, facing the other way. And this is our presentation. I said, man, I'm so sorry about that. I was, I was you know, didn't get carried away. So the, 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 the Christ... Return is very, very imminent, meaning that it's about to happen. When? I don't know. And it could happen any moment. It could happen any moment that we don't know. Maybe we can get out from that door, or maybe after that door, or I know maybe tomorrow. I'm not the person that knows, because Jesus said, only the Father knows. And I don't have any, anything I can tell you, right? But except for be ready. It's about to happen. In Romans 13, 11, it said, The hour has come for you to wake up. To wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer than we first believed. You know, many times when you are a Christian, it's happy, it becomes you are the dull Christian. Because you slumbered. The other words in slumber, just like a dormant. You hear many, many times about the word of God. And you become a dormant. And you become just like a dead tree, never even giving a fruit. That's what Jesus said. Because you never give me a tree, I will curse this tree, the fig tree, and never bear, uh, uh, bear fruit anymore. The dormant meaning is just like suspended all the functions in your body. Like, that's it. I believe this one before, that's it. You become a dormant, asleep, right? In your slumber. In your slumber. The hours come to wake you up from your slumber. Meaning the dormant things down there, you forget. Now you, we have to sleep, right? We have a time to sleep. We have time to, to eat. We have to time to serve the Lord. In a, it is not in a weekly basis. It is not in a monthly basis. You know? We need to have a lifestyle 24 hours. That we need Jesus in our life, the words, you know, because we are in the last days. The hour has come for you to wake up from the slumber because our salvation is near than when we first believed, right? So when was the last time you believed? And I hope the last time, and this will be, you know, uh, forever, right? So, <clears throat> several reasons of his coming. Several reasons of his coming, if nobody telling us what is that, regardless of how long, you know, being a Christian, and regardless that how many times we hear the word of God. Because for us, just like, it's natural for us. Because we are not ready. Because we are, in, you are, not, we are not in the mood of readiness. You know, if you are ready all the time, you just like in your mind, just click right away and say, yeah. I hear that one, I hear that one, you know. But when it comes to the time to hear, that's like what I'm saying, that every year the same over and over, our safety electrical now. Remember now, electrical. And electrical, I'm working as an electrician. That you know, say, Danny, what is that? I said, huh? Oh, oh. And everybody's laugh at me. The same thing sometimes because we fall asleep. I'm not saying I was a dormant in that time. Only for that moment because I get used to already. I'm saying, I know that, that every time, you know, every year we have that one as far as our, uh, what do you call, requirements in OSHA, that everybody... You know, goes to the training, goes to the training because it's a part of our job. It's a part of the job that we know. In Christian life, it is a part of us. We hear the word, you know, not only every Sunday, not only every month, but we have, you know, the, the mind, the setup that every time after our work, before the bedtime, whatever in your convenience, but giving you the time that to talk to the Lord. You have the time set aside to talk our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the way how we always prepare because we always know the time is coming. Praise God. Yeah. Because if you're just only listening and, you know, doing anything, it's so hard. So we have to see the several reason of His coming. The coming of Jesus is a time of redemption. 
the last, the previous preaching that we have for a couple of weeks, it was, we are being redeemed. But we are being redeemed because of our sin. That's the purpose of Jesus, you know. He came to this world 2,000 years ago. What the, what the Father says, the promise of all of us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So this is about the time for Jesus, for us to, redeem, you know, to make, our, uh, make his redemption to us. Because we are in the, in the cage, the bondage, that we are in the, you know, uh, uh, I remember I heard that one again that, you know, in Mindanao, there's a lot of foreigners down there that are waiting to be, you know, you're waiting to be, to, to be redeemed from their countries. There's a lot of foreigners in Mindanao, in my place, that being being captured because I don't know what's the reason why you have to go down there being a tourist, right? So that's the one in our case now that we are here waiting for the Lord for the redemption. That is one thing that we need to know. You know, the time that when we're, when we're making ready all the time, there's a lot of civil reason for us. The one, the one thing, the reason that we need to know that we are being redeemed in the time when Jesus comes is the time of redemption. And also Paul, the, you know, emphasized, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the de dead in Christ will rise first. That's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 60. Question, are you ready for the last boarding call? When the trumpet call, when you hear that one, maybe in a twinkling of an eye, you know, in a fraction of a second, I cannot see my sister here in this earth, but I see in heaven. The last boarding call. That is very, very, you know, for me. You know, oh man, that's, just, that's awesome. Because if you don't have a lot of expectation on that thing, you say, well, what is that? Is that really matter to me? It really matters to you because that, that is the your, you know, that's, it, that's your, either you suffer, you know, for the rest of your life or either, you know, live, you know, uh, in heaven, right? It is really matter to us, right? <clears throat> so, that's the verse. The coming of Jesus is the time of rejoicing. Do you have a time to rejoice when you come to work? Do you have a time when you, when you, come, when you come to work, you know, 8 hours or 12 hours a day? But I guess sometimes if after more than, more than 12 hours, all you have to do is just eat and sleep. But this time, the coming of Jesus is a time of rejoicing. And most of, most of us know what is rejoicing. You know, rejoicing that, you know, that, that we know that Jesus is coming. That we know that we have a big expectation that he's coming. And we, we you know, you remember that, you know, the Filipino tradition. When someone comes to the Philippines, in your uh, family member, you have a big expectation in a party. You invite your friends. And it happens to me, you know. While waiting for my family back in the Philippines, and we have a big, big celebration. But my wife never comes because he missed the plane. They missed the plane with, with my two children. He said, Man, where is your wife? So I don't know. I don't know what happened. You know what? What coincidence? I just drove all the way down to downtown. I mean, in the airport. I see my wife and my two kids. They were so small. I said, Man, what happened? How come they're there? You know, I said, man, we're waiting from, you know, the day before. Everybody's asking, where's Danny's wife? Where's the family? Said, oh, they missed the plane. And I, I, I was so shame. I don't want to get out from the room. I said, Danny, come out. Come, come out in the room. I said, man, I have a lot of, you know, you know people are rejoicing with me. But guess what's those people? I, I don't know those people. I don't know those people. They just invited me to their house and lived there for two years anyhow. You know, for pre-boarding, pre-lodging. Because they considered me as one of their own. I just only met them in the airport <laughs> when I came here. I just only met them in the airport. Said, oh, do you have anybody? Said, I know. Yep, and I call my, my, my relative. Most of, us, most of you guys know about this thing. When I call my relative, said, hey, where's auntie? Who are you? Oh, I'm so-and-so. We don't know you. So, oh, shoot, what am I going to do now? In my mind, said, oh, I just sit down and hung up the, hung up the phone. Said. And when he came back, and then the lady asked me, so did you talk to your relatives? She said, oh, nobody home. So what are you going to do? Oh, well, I don't know what you're going to do now, you know. I was sitting down there in the airport, and she came back again and said, hey, I talked to my husband. You can come with us. Oh, my, my, my spirit said, oh, man, at least I can sleep tonight for one night, you know. I thought that was what my, that's what I'm thinking. I can sleep for one night. And then she said, well, 
We're gonna go to your relatives. Oh man, pounding again my heart. Said, man, my relative doesn't want me. What, what, what are we gonna do down there in my mind? He said, okay, Danny, let's go. We went down there. But most of my relatives in Big Island, only one family is here in, in, in Kalihi. Kalihi in, my pa, I mean, in, in, in downtown. So we went down there. It happens that nobody there. Oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm rejoicing that, you know what? Oh, and they didn't see my, my relatives. But anyway. That's what happened to me, you know. I'm totally stranger in this place, you know. Look at me now. Same Danny, right? So it never changed. You know, I never changed. I'm still Visayan. Now I become Ilusayan, right? Ilocano Visayan, right? So anyway, that was the story of my life. So now come rejoicing. We're rejoicing for that day, you know, for my, for my children, to my family to come, but they were not there. But everybody, oh, what happened? Don't ask me. Don't ask me. But, oh, you know, these people, they are the one who buy the pig, they are the one who buy the food, everything. You know what, Danny? This is about the time for us to help you. So why? How are you going to help me? The people, we invite a lot of people, we invite a lot of people, all my friends, you know, all my co-workers. And then, oh, what does they have to do with that? Besides, you don't know, you know, they're not giving you the thing, you know, they can sing good, but, you know. But they said, oh, the envelope, said, what is this? You know, she said, whoa, man, a lot of money after all. But where's my family? I have the money, but I have the family. But anyway, that's not the short story of my life. If you want some more, you know, come during the night time. I want to be continued, right? So, that is awesome, you know, that God is preparing for this person for me, you know. But what is your hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? It is not you in the presence of the Lord. Don't take it lightly. It is not you. That's a question down there. In the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his coming. So meaning you are there, you see him. That's the day of rejoicing. But if you take it so lightly, what it does make it to me, you know, when you look at it, it is not you. In the presence of the Lord, when he's coming, are you proud of that in yourself? Yes, of you, you're proud of that because you made it, right? You know, said, Lord, thank you. I'm not accrediting myself a lot because of you. But if you don't really think, you know, about that one, say, it's nothing that bursts. It's nothing to do with my faith. But it is. Because it's it not you in the presence of the Lord. In the other translation, you, don't, you, don't, you cannot see even. I remember this even when the kids said, who do this thing? Not even. You know, not even. You know, because it's not maybe, it's not pantai. Not even. But anyway, yeah, so if you look at this way here, take it so lightly, you know, you look at yourself down there, that is, is it not you I mean, when, uh, in the presence of God, in the, in the presence of Jesus Christ when he come? You know? Think about that. It's not only the Messiah think this way. All of us, right? You know, I'm thinking about Messiah, but I'm not Messiah, you know. All right, so I forget that. <laughs> So what you have to do is make it sure that you are one of those. That we are one of those in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ in the second coming. Right? So the coming of Jesus is a time of rewarding. Most of us, you know, all of us, we want reward. We want reward. You want reward from the store. You want reward from anything. You want reward from your family. You want reward from your parents when you do good things, especially the children nowadays. They need the rewards. But it is a different and big reward. It's a time of rewarding. But most of us, like what I said, if we don't really know all these things, then what is that rewarding is all about? I read my Bible all the time, but I never come across with that. But meaning that it never goes across all the Bible. All right? <clears throat> Most of, most of the people know in this thing here. Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So now look at that one quickly. Is it quick now in our time? Because we live in our time, but Jesus, he lived his own time. So he said quickly, because our 1,000 years only one day for him. It was by verse, vice versa. And most of us said, man, how come? I heard this many, many times. Oh, they're always preaching that one, the, the, the Lord is coming. But now, I'm old already. It's not coming yet, but for Jesus, for the, for the Bible says here, I'm coming quickly. 
So meaning now and that you don't have to drag your faith, your, your faith all the time. You have to just like be ready. In the Philippines, the Boy Scout is lagging handa, meaning be, be ready all the time. Right? What kind of Christian do we have if we don't have the attitude of be ready all the time? You know, the attitude when Paul says the, the, the Christian just like soldiers, we are the warriors. You know what is the soldiers? The, you think that one the only train when, when the war broke out tomorrow? They have always, always training constantly. The same with us, you know, when Paul says that we are the soldier of Christ, meaning that one every day, every 24 hours, we have to put something down there to feed ourselves. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 So if the, if the coming of Jesus is about to happen, what must we do? What must we do? Right? So now, maybe you're, when you come home, say, what, what are they talking about? What do I have to do? Just wait or just, you know, just wait because he's coming. Yes, of course. Nobody can stop him from coming. You know, of course. But are you ready? Are we ready? Because I, I tell you some more that made me thinking about yourself. Well, I am safe and secure, but you are not. You are not. Not until, you know, that you will know. All right, so do at least several ways to change our living. It takes in our part that we need to do several changes. But we maybe think that, you know, Little adjustment said, man, you know, am I presentable when the Lord comes? So like, I was, I was thinking about my, my, myself. I mean, I know that my wife is coming. So do we still really know, I mean, like me? Or do we just thinking about maybe I'm changed, you know? But this is only my mind, you know, it's only my mind. But listen to this. This is a spiritual thing. Am I ready when Jesus is come? That's a big question in our life. That's a big question in our life. It, it remains question if we don't have to do something. It is a remain question to us if we don't do anything. It says in here, they're always ready. In Matthew 24, 44, therefore you, you, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you don't expect. You don't expect, but we know. You know that he's coming, but we don't know it's when. So now, they're just keeping up you, update, keeping up you, you know, that, that you continue to reinforce your faith, continue to do things that what God wants you to do. I don't know what God wants you to do. And I guess I tell you one thing, is maybe continue to read your Bible. Continue to have your faith with you all days. That maybe you have only faith weekly when you come to the church, you know, when you come to Wednesday evening, then you have another faith again. You know, so as you leave from this place, your faith is like, just like your clothes, you change that one. But I hope it's not the case. Because when we are, when we are, when we are a soldier of God, we always, you know, be ready. We always ready in our hearts and our mind. Temptation is always there. It's a part of our readiness. Because if you don't have, if you don't see those things, then you can read to ourselves. So I am a Christian that yield to that, to that temptation. Let me tell you something. When, when somebody, you know, I, was, I remember that was Pastor Adele when he preached that Wednesday, Wednesday night. He said, be ready. When you go, to, go back to your school, there will be a temp temptation. It happens to me the following day again. And then I back up and said, man, this is temptation for me. It, you know, uh, Satan wants to ruin your life, your day. Because you know what? It affects until the rest, until you come home. You know, you scold anybody in your house because you get, you get offended when somebody tells you something. That's the way that we need to be ready. We need to be ready the word of God because it's protecting us in temptation. He shields us in anything that comes to us, the arrow of the enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. That our mind and our hearts is always ready. That they can discern what the, what the meant for them when, you, when they try to attack. Because one thing, that why that I have that one? Because when somebody make a report, this is the report said, these things was fixed and these things was changed by Danny Busano and it fails. Said, what's going on? And then, when we have the meeting, our son said, "Hey, uh, something wrong is here." And then the boss said, "See, you telling that? What happened to the things that fell?" I said, "Oh, come on, man." And then he said, "That's what he said, man." Then I was thinking about what Pastor Adele preaching. He said, "Man, this is temptation for me to ruin my my, my days." 
you know. And I talked with the person, one someone, I mean, when the next day, or next time, when you do the report, do it to yourself. Don't bring any name. Because in the past, you know, that is the problem. It's another problem that happens. No, there's two, two different things. No. Two different things for me and for you, but there are just only one thing. You know, so he, want, uh, he wants to, to ruin my whole day. But you know what? Praise God that I was able to control myself. Because none of you guys hear that, you know, everything that only small things, small things, and it affects you the whole day. They're lucky my, my wife she come home during the, the night, 9 o'clock. You know, I, I sleep already when she come home. You know? <laughs> Right? So, when the Son of Man is coming, the hour that we don't expect, are we ready? Our hearts and minds are ready. Jesus began his public ministry with a simple message, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. But if you don't have the basic you know, foundation about the seeds and about the, the sower, you know, the word of God, we don't have any clue. We know he's coming. We know it is very imminent that, you know, our Jesus Christ never, never, you know, never slumber or sleep. He's always 24 hours, 24-7, right? So now that we know that uh, Jesus talked to his, to his disciple, yet, you know, in his, excuse me, in his ministry, the simple message, Jesus telling them, repent, the kingdom of heaven is near. In the days before his crucifixion, Jesus spoke to the disciples about the kingdom of God. Just like what I'm talking this morning. You know, the kingdom of God, that we know all those things. You know, in my, in my, in my house, there's a lot of rooms down there, you know, for the big spacers. In my house, there's a lot of mansion for those who want to be a millionaire. No, and that's not the one, right? That's not the one. I'm just only giving you, you know, to, to keep on, you know, thinking about all these things. The thinking about the, what is the word of God that really applies to our, to, to, our, to our place. So now, this man struggled to understand, just like you and me. They struggled to understand, you know, all Jesus was telling them about, about let's see, example, the son. He's talking about the good shepherd. And what is the good shepherd to them? You know, in John 10, 11, he said, good shepherds lay down his life for the sheep. John 15, 13, he said, greater love is no one than this the one, the one laid down his life for his friend. That's Jesus, right? Now we know that. But for them, it's really, really hard to understand. It's really, really hard to understand to digest what Jesus is talking about. And we know that, right? So the disciple asked what to look for, the, uh, for, for, and Jesus told them within the verse 11 of the same chapter in Matthew 24. <clears throat> he said, Jesus revealed seven signs pointing to his coming at the end of time. And those are the signs. Number one. Let me check if I have this uh, stuff in here. So for, for you guys, helping you. It's not there. Okay, now, when you look at that one, therefore keep watch because you do not know on what your Lord will come. But understand this, if the, if the owner of the house had known at, at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have killed and would not have to let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you not expect him. But we know that we are in the mood of expectation. The only problem is we don't know what time, right? So now it says in here that the seven, the seven signs that Jesus gave to them, to his disciples. Number one is deception. And the same, the same chapter, the same chapter. So deception. So for many will come in my name, claim that I am Christ. I don't know if you heard that. I don't know if you knew a person that's saying that he is Christ from Dabao or from the desert, you know, from any, you know, everywhere. But don't believe that one. That's just a deception. In Matthew 24, 24 says, Many false Christ perform signs and miracles. To deceive, oh no, no, hold on. to deceive the unbelievers, no. To deceive you and me, the very elect. The very elect, that's what in Matthew 24, 24. It is not, oh, I will deceive to the non-believers. No, they are being deceived already. 
you know, they want you, your Satan wants you to, you know, take him back, take him back, right? You know, these people, you know, I used to deceive them before. Now they open their, their eyes. So, Matthew 24, 24, you better watch out. Because even the very elect, deception because of miracles and signs, you know, you're not contented what Jesus did. did. We studied the book, of, the book of John, and we know that there's a seven signs from there. The, la, the last seven signs is the, the, the resurrection of Lazarus before his crucifixion, before he entered, before he entered the, uh, 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 Jerusalem, right? The seven signs, they have that one, from, from uh, whining to, uh, wine turning to uh, uh, water to, to wine, feeding of uh, multitudes, 5,000, you know, healing the sick, up to Lazarus, the seven signs also. But anyway, you know, there, there is a, a worldwide birth pains, meaning that one, that there's a lot of struggles, you know. Even today, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But see to it that you are not alarmed. What does it mean to you? But you know, it's sad to say, when we hear a lot of these things nowadays, who, who the person that alarmed? The Christians. They were so alarmed of, of other things. Well, you know, you know, this is what happened now. And there's a lot of communication down there in your, in your Facebook and everything about talking about, you know, oh, this is what happened. This is where we're, yeah, we're in the last days, right? But see to it that you're not being alarmed. Meaning said, this is about a time for rejoicing because I know when Jesus come. Why are you worry so much about the things that happened today if we know that we'll be ready? Because the more that we, we, we worry about things, the more that we worry about the war, rumors of wars. Now, now what it is? Rumors of wars. Rumors of wars. It's not a real war yet. You know what? No, for us, for you and me, the enemy is always conducting you a deception and conducting you about intimidation. That's what intimidation for the Christian. Instead of that, look to the author and the finishers of our faith that Jesus Christ is coming. Don't be alarmed. You should be rejoiced. Our salvation is getting nigh, getting near than what it used to be. I'm always in the shore from miles and miles away while traveling as a Christian. I'm in the hand read arm reach now. Who knows? If Jesus comes back tomorrow, if you don't, if I go with Jesus maybe tomorrow or next day, I will be in the hands of the good hands, not in my, not, not in my, my insurance, they are in the good hands, right? I'm not in the good hands right now after my house burned, I'm still waiting for the result. <laughs> yeah. So I'm in the good hands with my Jesus and everything I have to forget already. You know what? Because I have my Lord, you know. That's the expectation that we have instead to be alarmed of what happened surround us because that's the only sign you know what is signs you, you have to yield the sign you know we stop you stop right that's that's the signs everywhere there's a lot of signs everywhere right so you hear the lot of persecution in verse 9 then you will be handed and be persecuted in hawaii there nothing happened yet but only one thing is we cannot go to the public school you know public places to pray to conduct the bible study you know, it's not really that, you know, handed to the, you know, to the persecutor for, for persecution. The most of us here, they saw the church. They get one million, two million from the church. And I hear the new hope they are being about two or three million. Because one person, he said, I don't like the way they are. I don't like them using the public places. They saw them. They get a couple of millions. Not only in the new hope, but the rest of these people that are using the public, you know, schools. It's sad to say. It's hard, you know, to look at that way. But don't be alarmed. This is one of the signs. Your salvation is getting closer. Getting closer because of these people keep on pushing, pushing, pushing away the word of God. Pushing away the word of God. But to us, that we know the word of God is living with us in our heart. That's the only way for us to have to prepare. So praise God because we are here this morning. It's a part of our, it's a part of our waiting it's a part of our preparation. Sunday after Sunday, Bible study after Bible study, Wednesday after Wednesday, that we hear the word of God, that nothing changed. It's always progressive in our heart. It's always living in our heart. For those who are dying in their faith, this is about the time to raise up. This is about the time to wake up. 
This is about the time to wake up because don't wait for the falling away. Don't wait for the falling away, meaning that you, Christian, as Christian, there will be a chance for us to be falling away. Why are you talking about falling away, not falling away for the non-believers? Those non-believers, they used to be believers, and they're falling away until the time they die that they never reconcile to the Lord. Falling away is the best, I mean, the worst thing that happened in your life because you'll never know when Jesus comes. Falling away. Many will turn away from the faith. You know, only one word. I don't believe God anymore. One person came to me when I gave the invocation. You know, one, one, of, one of the funeral came to me. I don't believe God, so, well, it's up to you, but I believe God, you know. But you have the room. God never pushed away to those people. It's up to you. But Manong, I don't believe God. Well, hopefully someday, somehow, you can find a way. To believe God. You cannot force them. I cannot twist their arm. Many false prophets will appear. It's in Matthew 24, 24. Many false prophets will appear to deceive us. Many prophets to distract us. And also that in verse 12, wickedness increases. And we hear all those things that we don't hear it before. Now we hear that we cherish that as a Christian. We cherish that, 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 you know, the moral thing in our life. What a day today is the immoral thing is immoral to them. The bad things to them is neutral to them. No, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong if you like the same person like you. There's nothing wrong with that person and person. That's wrong. There's nothing wrong because the immorality now is immoral to them. Increase in wickedness. Increase in everything. The bad things to them is good. The bad thing for us is bad. Jesus died once. Remember that. I cannot change everything about morality that become immoral or immoral to morality. No. What is immoral is moral. What is moral is immoral. That's the standard of, of uh, Christian. You know, the world, they, 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 they change the standard. So that's why in the last days, increase of wickedness. Increase of wickedness as long as you have a good lawyer, as long as you know how to you know, get away from it, then to you it's okay. To you it's okay. But the word of God is not okay because the Bible says increase of wickedness in the last days. And that's one of the, one of the signs for us to take heed that our Jesus Christ is coming for us regardless of what happened to this world, regardless of what they think, regardless if the Christians are crazy to them, regardless if the Christian is off. You hear that before? Oh, you Christians are crazy because you cannot do this, you cannot do that, you know? They try to convince you that it's okay. You know, you know what they, they you know that I'm a pastor. I'm, I'm praying. You know, pastor, you want to drink beer? Oh, <laughs> there's a beer and the pastor of beer. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, I used to drink that before, you know, in my mind. I used to drink that before, but no more, right? So now, there's a little tweaking. There's a lot of adjusting in life now. It's a lot of that. Okay, the last one. Worldwide evangelism. In verse 14 says, The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the world. And what? The end will come. Probably we are not, we are not done yet in our part, you know, evangelizing. Because there are places nowadays that you cannot go to the place, you know, that because of the stronghold of the Muslim, stronghold of any religion, that really protecting their people. But people thinking about religion is the one can help them. But for the Christian, religion is nothing. Only the relationship of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we want them to know, that Jesus wants relationship for each, every one of us. Not only for us here, but in every corners of the world. But too sad. Hallelujah. The world is round. There's no corner. But no, anyway, it's only joking. But anyway, that's the one last sign. You know, the word of God is being pushed to anywhere. When I look at that one in the missiologies, try to research on how many percent, but they didn't really, you know, specify the how many percent now. They only said 97 persons, 97 person or 96 person is not being rich yet in a Muslim, Muslim countries. Because it's really, really hard. Because, you know, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah? So, 
In Matthew 24, verses 40, 20, uh, 42 to 44, therefore keep watch. So we knew that. Therefore we keep watch because you don't know when the day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known that the time of night the thief was come, coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect. So that's the, that's the, the message from the 24, um, Matthew 24 and 4. Okay, now the second one. This is, you know what, it's really sometimes it's, it, it, it's really hard for us encouraging one another. Why? Because there's something in your heart that you cannot encourage your brother. But leave aside from those things, you know. And this is about for us to, 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 to like, uh, encourage one another. The topic is not meant to make us to be, like, scared, right? Then you said, quite, you know, instead of encouragement, you said, no, you're go, if you don't believe God, you'll go to heaven. You know, that's not encouragement, right, to me. I don't know if you guys... I'm talking about that one because before I, I was so impatient when I talked to this person because he become he become like very defensive. Said, "Yeah, what about you tonight if you die?" Well, I go to Mililani, you know. I said, oh, "Okay, I cannot, I cannot do anything." You know? <laughs> I said, "I stopped there already," you know. <laughs> Instead of I'm so I'm so like uh, mad at him. Said, oh, shield! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say, right? So he challenged us to do something, right? So therefore, encourage each one, each other with this word. Not only this word, but encourage one another and build each uh, other up. You know, build each other up. But it's sad to say because you cannot build up your pillow, uh, pillow uh, Christian every day because you are not working together, right? But I have two guys with me as a Christian. What I have to do is encourage them. You know, what, what, when, they, when, they, when they knew they get a new guy, they're going to tell me who I am. And next time she said, Danny, I heard that you are a pastor. Well, I'm sorry, I was scolding you before. Then I'm like, all right. You know, he <laughs> justified it. Yeah? Because he just said, Danny, blah, blah, blah. It's my boss. What I can say is my boss is scolding me. And then after that, he said, don't you know that guy that, that you lead him down there, he's going to fall down and die? He said, well, because about the time maybe go to the middle of then. Nah. <laughs> and funny though, that I was one of the pastors. He came to me and apologized, right? Apologize because that I'm a pastor. So, live a pure life. Is it hard for us to live a pure life? No, a good question is, when I am involved in a hunky-punky things, when I am involved in some things that I'm a Christian, what would Jesus do to you? I have a share to now on what we would do. My friends, he says his name is Doc. <laughs> what WWD? What's a WWD? Then he said, I have a lot, dozens of them. Because when my house burned, all the shirt, my bones, he gave it to me. The lift over in my company. He said, Look at who's Doc? Oh, one of the guys went to, to, to Vietnam, Philippines to Vietnam. So, you know what? What would, what would Jesus do when he found out the Christian, one Christian from this congregation or other congregation and doing the things that are legal in the, in the sight of the Lord? I would say, God will forgive you, but stop that doing. Right? Yeah, live up your lives. <clears throat> First John 2.28, And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may, not be, con we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. Is, is you think that one you're going to be ashamed? It's nothing more than that. You know, if we continue, the, 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 the things that we continue every day, we exercise those things, we oh, Jesus is not coming yet. Oh, Jesus, maybe, maybe, you know, if I know he's coming, but the Bible says we don't know when is the time. It, it is good when it's Sunday morning, everybody's here, right? You know, and then there's one or two persons that said, oh, what's the matter with this guy? He sleep down there and said, huh? Where's my, where's my uh, brother and sisters? Don't worry, you still have the pastor. Oh, good. That's the one. That's the time, you know. It's really hard. It's really, really hard. We need to continue to be vigilant because time is really short. Time is really short. When God says so, it's not mine. So ask Jesus to save you. This is for everybody here are saved. If not, this is about the time. And this is about the time. And I remember when I was 12 years old, the pastor asked, for those people who want to receive the Lord Jesus, come, come in front of here. Because if you ashamed the Son of Man, the Father will ashamed you in heaven. But I don't have to give you that intimidation. 
But what it is when spirit touch you that you need to ask salvation from the Lord this Sabbath time. Salvation is now, not for tomorrow. I raised, I raised as a Baptist. A Baptist is very, very, you know, firm on that, you know. It is, not, it is not the way how. Repeat after me. No, you come here and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only me, everybody came because Holy Spirit is touching them. Because they know that it's very eminent for him to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we can only say that, well, when the next time when I come, there's a lot of Sunday. But what about if Sunday never comes? Jesus came. That's the point there. If you're not saved yet, ask Jesus to save you. It is not just like, well, when I come home, I have to read my Bible. I have to read John 3, 6, and I know that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But the Bible says, confess in front of all the witness. If you ashamed the son of mine, the father, will, father in heaven will ashamed you. That strikes me that time when I was 12 years old. I came with a tear and said, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I need to accept you, Lord. You know, but I'm telling you, 12 years old, 14 years old, 16 years old, I must lead. Because I have to want to do my own things. But it is not good. But let me tell you something. If you have never turned your life over to Christ and received his salvation, I want you to, you know, to encourage you to be reconciled before it's too late. The Bible says, whoever call in the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. In 2 Peter 3, 9 to 10, the Lord isn't really being slowed down, slow about his promise. As some people think, no, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. That is the word for this morning. Repent and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the coming, coming king. If you just only like the, the, like the people before, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, and they, they, they laid down their coats, and all these palm trees were down there. But after that, moment after, crucify him! Crucify him! And that is not supposed to be a Christian. When you say you accepted the Lord, you accepted the Lord. And you have to firm, because it's, uh, your faith is being firm in the name of the Lord, not to your pastor. If you look at the pastors that fail, if you look at the evangelists that fail, you fail also because it never anchors to the rock of all ages, which is Jesus Christ. What happened to this world is melting away. What happened to this world is banish and everything, but the word of God will remain to your hearts as long as you believe. I encourage you this morning. I encourage you this morning, if you never received the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the ringing words from the, from the Lord. It is not my word because it, I hear this many times in myself, so I surrender my, my life. When one of our deacons told us when I was in the young people, what happened if tonight when Jesus comes, I wonder among us who will be left behind and everybody is looking at me behind because I'm the person that every time late. I was late 30 minutes. But I go home early 30 minutes because I don't want the pastor to talk to me again. I was the first to hit the, the, the door. But brothers and sisters, time is short. You cannot waste anything. You know why? Our borrowed life. Our borrowed life is just like the water that, 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 that you know, spilled in the ground that we cannot gather it back anymore. Meaning if I die tomorrow, I'll die tomorrow. If I die tomorrow, if you die tomorrow that knows Jesus Christ, you are in the good hands, not in your insurance. Not in your insurance. Jesus, he was asking you this morning, come for those who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Shall we stand? <laughs> Hallelujah.